All right, this video is on section 2-1 on patterns and something called inductive reasoning. Okay, by the end of this video, you should know what inductive reasoning is, be able to use inductive reasoning to make something called conjectures, be able to find a counterexample of a false conjecture. Okay, now I know a lot of those words I just used will be new to you, um, but I hope that by the end of this video, it makes sense. Okay, um, we're also covering two geometry standards, G.1.1 and G.6.1. All right, inductive reasoning is reasoning based on patterns. Okay, um, so you see a pattern, something happen over and over again, and you, you know, <clears throat> use inductive reasoning to, to see that pattern, and then you assume it's going to keep going that way, and usually it does, and when it doesn't, you adjust your pattern so that it does match um, what you think is going to happen. Okay, we use those exact same reasoning abilities in math all the time. Okay, um, so let's look for a pattern and let's find the next two terms in that pattern. Okay, so the, the sequence of terms, 3, 9, 27, 81, um, now, we'll look at maybe adding or subtracting or multiplying or dividing. Um, and let's see, the numbers are getting bigger, and they're getting bigger, um, you know, this is 3 to 9, and this is 27 to 81. So the number is getting bigger kind of fast, and so I'll look at multiplying. So 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 times 3 is 27, and 27 times 3 is 81. So the pattern must be multiplying by 3. Okay, so I will um, continue that pattern on, and um, 81 times 3 is 243, and then 243 times 3 is 729. Okay, and it does keep going, um, but those, those are the next two terms. Okay, number two, um, a design, a circle with a triangle, a circle with a square, circle with a pentagon. Um, now to see what the pattern is, we'll look at how many sides there are. Um, a triangle has three sides, a square has four sides, a pentagon has five sides. Okay, so to continue the pattern, I'll draw a circle with a six-sided shape in it. And if you don't know this already, it's called a hexagon. Okay, and the next one with seven sides which if you don't know, it's called a heptagon, but we'll talk more about um, shapes and, and what you name them later. Okay, um, and it would just, that pattern would continue on. Number three is, is a, a trickier pattern, negative five, negative two, four, 13. Um, I can't really think of anything I could use in multiplying, um, and the numbers are definitely getting bigger, so I'll try adding. Negative five, um, to negative 2 is adding 3. Negative 2 to positive 4 is adding 6. 4 to 13 is adding 9. Okay, so the pattern must be you're, you're adding by 3 more each time. Okay, so if I take 13 and add, um, let's see here, add 12, I will get 25. And if I add 15, then I get 40. Okay, so using inductive reasoning, seeing patterns, um, in this case, continuing them on. Okay, um, and here's kind of the, the overall um, process that we'll use in inductive reasoning. Okay, we'll look for a pattern. Um, hopefully, we'll see it. We'll make a conjecture about either... Um, in the general sense of what the pattern is, um, or maybe make a conjecture about, you know, a specific case of, you know, after 20 terms, it'll be this. Um, now, a conjecture is an unproven statement that's based on your observation. So it's something you think is true, um, but it hasn't been proven yet. Okay, once it's been proven, we change the name to a theorem, um, but we'll get into that later on. Number three, we then try to verify the conjecture, which we test it to see if, if it works. Okay? Now, theoretically, we should try all cases, um, but we don't have the tools yet to, to look at all cases, and we'll look at that later on in the chapter. Um, but at least for now, try it for, for two or three other um, examples to see if it, if it still is true. 
Okay, so here's an example. Um, we'll look at the sum of the first n odd positive integers. Now what that means is um, the first one odd positive integer is the number one. Okay, the first two positive integers is one and three, and one plus three is four. The first three odd positive integers is one, three, and five. If I add those together, I get nine. And the first four are one plus three plus five plus seven, which is 16. Okay, now these numbers may not look familiar to you, um, but what you'll notice is that it's one squared, it's this number two to the second power, or this is three to the second power, this is four to the second power. Okay, so if I see that pattern, I'd make a conjecture. And the conjecture is, well, um, it happened for the first four, so maybe the sum of the first n odd positive integers is n squared. Okay? Now, to, to verify that for all cases, I would need to use a proof, which I don't have the tools for, um, even in this class, we won't really get to it. But we'll test it for a few more to make sure that, that that's true. If I take the first seven, for example, I just picked that randomly. Um, if I pick the first seven numbers, it equals 49, which is 7 squared. Okay, now this is actually a true conjecture, um, and we have just verified it. Okay, um, the pattern RWB, RWB, um, which stands for red, white, and blue if you're curious, um, RWB, RWB. Okay, the pattern is that these three letters will repeat over and over and over again. Okay, um, RWB, will repeat over and over again. Okay, What conjecture can you make about the 21st term in the sequence? Well, um, I don't want to have to write out 21 of these, because um, this question can easily change to what's the 100th term of the sequence. So we want to find a way that we can find out what the 20th, 21st term will be without writing them all out. So I will look at this and say, well, this is the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. seventh, eighth, ninth. Now you'll notice something that first of all we have three um, terms that make up the pattern. Okay, And the third one, the last one, will always be a multiple of three because there's three terms in the pattern. So um, what I will do is I'll use that and say well what are some numbers right around 21? Well 21 happens to be a multiple of 3, okay? And so if we did RWB, 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 um, the 21st term, because it's a multiple of 3, it's 3 times 7, um, that we would end up on B. Okay, now if you don't really believe me on that, you can go ahead and write out the first 21 terms, and the 21st term will be B, um, because um, multiples of 3 always end up on the letter B. Um, another example, here's a pattern. Um, if you look at it for a second, um, you'll see that the color, it's like rotating um, clockwise. Okay, So the green goes here, and the purple goes here, and the red goes here, and the, the gray goes there. So it's kind of just rotating once each time. Okay, um, So after this one, um, green would go here, um, red would go down here, purple, I'll get as close as I can with blue, and then gray would be down here, okay? Which happens to be exactly what um, the first one is. So after these four, it would repeat back to here, okay? So I would say um, the pattern is that's rotating clockwise. Okay. Can you make a conjecture about the 21st term? Well, um, like we discussed before, using the multiples of, of the number of terms it takes for it to repeat, um, I'll use that. So, um, the first term is here, second, third, fourth. I would repeat with the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth. Now, I can keep going, but you'll see that... Um, 
that these terms here are always multiples of 4 Okay, so the 21st term, I kind of think about what before 21 is a multiple of 4 and happens to be 20. So if I kept going, I get 20 here, which means 21 would be in this column. Okay, so the, um, the first term in the sequence would be this one. Okay, and that's a conjecture. We could actually test it if we wanted to. Um, Okay, to prove that a conjecture is true, um, you need to prove it's true for all cases. Okay, not just try one or two. You have to, you'd have to prove it for all cases. Okay, um, and we'll get into the tools of how to do that in future chapter and future sections. Okay, to prove that it's false, all you need is to provide, is provide one counterexample. Okay, a counterexample is an example that shows it's false. Okay, so uh, to prove something's false, all you need is one example where it's not true. And then it, the, the conjecture is false. Okay, um, so let's find a counterexample. Um, here's a conjecture that seems true, um, but it's not. For all real numbers x, um, the expression x squared is greater than or equal to x. Well, if you think about if I take um, some number like uh, 1 and I square it, I get 1. Now it's, that's equal to, if I take 2 squared, I get 4. Well, that's 4 is greater than, than 2. Take 3 squared, I get 9, and 9 is greater than 3. And 4 squared equals 16, which is greater than 4. So it, it seems like it would be true. Um, but make sure that you test um, negative numbers and also fractions. Okay, so if I test some negative numbers, um, negative 1 squared is equal to 1, that, that's still greater. Um, negative 2 squared is equal to 4, and that's still greater. Okay, so negative numbers won't help us. But if I try some fractions, 0.5 squared is equal to 0.25. Okay, now I'm not sure how good you are with decimals, but the number 0.25 um, is actually less than 0.5. Okay, if it's easier for you, I'll think about 0 0.50. Um, that 0.25 is less than point, um, 0.5. So a counterexample would be 1 half or 0.5 would be a counterexample. That one example by itself proves this conjecture false. Okay, now um, it may be difficult for you to kind of understand the idea that um, a statement is either always true or it's false, okay? Um, I know that, like looking back at this example, you want to say, well, it's true for, um, you know, whole numbers and negative numbers, but not true for fractions, okay? Um, and, and what you're doing is you're kind of um, adjusting your conjecture so it's true, which is what you should be thinking. Um, but the statement as it's written right here um, is either always true or it's false. Okay, if it's, if, it's ever, if it's false in any case, uh, we consider it logically false. Okay, um, conjecture, whenever you multiply a number by 2, the product is greater than the original number. Okay, um, now if you take numbers like 3, uh, 3 times 2 is 6. Um, write this down. I take 3. Um, if I multiply that number by 2, I get 6, and that is greater than the original number. If I take a number like 5 um, and, and multiply it by 2, I get 10. Okay, again, um, these numbers seem to be working, but I'll look at negative numbers and fractions. Um, I'll start with negatives. If I take negative 2 and I multiply that number by 2, I get negative 4. Wait, now negative 2 is actually bigger than negative 4, and so that's, <clears throat> that's my counterexample. Negative 2... Um, is my counterexample. Now I know that a lot of students want to write down, um, you know, any any negative number as your counterexample, and that actually isn't a counterexample, although it's a lot of counterexamples. Um, you need to have one specific example, so your counterexample would be negative two or negative three, or um, one specific example where it's not true. Um, next, you can connect any three points to form a triangle. 
So you think, take three points, make a triangle. Well, that should work. But if the points are actually collinear, they actually don't form a triangle. Okay, so this case where they're collinear um, would be a counterexample. Okay, so these are both false. Okay, all squares have four sides. Well, anything that's a square will have four sides. So that must be true. Um, I can't find a counterexample for that. Um, all four-sided figures are squares. Um, well, we'll get into it later on in the year, but this would not be considered a square because um, it doesn't have the properties of, of squares. Okay, inductive reasoning is very important um, to our study of mathematics, especially in this class. Um, so get in the habit of looking for patterns, writing conjectures. Um, we'll spend some time in class, you know, looking at some conjectures, trying to find counterexamples. Um, but this idea of inductive reasoning is very important. Okay, I hope that now the word inductive reasoning, um, conjectures, counterexamples, those ideas um, are familiar to you and they make sense.